A dream is just a great idea that doesn't have a website yet. You know who says that? Squarespace, that's who, and they're the sponsor for today's show. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. With 24-7 award-winning customer support, you can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. So head on over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. No, not, not too deep. Dear beautiful Not Too Deep listeners, very exciting news. We are doing our first Los Angeles live show for Not Too Deep this Thursday, April 26th at 8 p.m. at Dynasty Typewriter at the Hayworth. If you live in or around the Los Angeles area, please make sure you come. Our guest is Dean Ungler from The Bachelorette, a.k.a. Deanie Babies, on all social media platforms. It's going to be really exciting. Again, it's this Thursday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Tickets are available now, so get them while they are hot. Go to NotTooDeep.com for all the details. See you there. We're back with another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm Grace Helbig. And I am Jack Ferry. I don't think I've ever introduced an episode that professionally before. You haven't. I no. like it, though. Um, I'm in this the, this my get mode. Where oh, it's yeah. There, it's much more introductory and less... Um, raw like sure. this is well tell me about that because you've been working on that for a while now how yeah. is it going it's this been going get? really well it's a lot of work but a lot of really fun work yeah um and it's not very scripted which is nice we do a lot of which ties into our guests in this episode we play a lot of improvisational games in a lot of ways sure. on episodes which has been really fun but also like mentally frying i'm so you know i met you when i was doing improv in new york i know like a few nights a week every week for like five years straight and I it's been I've been in LA for five years now and I haven't done any improv so well I'm rusty sure that's 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 gonna be uh, the, the case with any skill but yeah. do you feel like it's kind of like riding a bike like you're getting back on yeah, it yeah a little bit more and more and not being too precious about it I think that's the yeah. thing too you know it's like making um the good thing is we have editing um, yeah that's true so that's, that's the thing about uh, improv crutch. sometimes things just don't land. They live and die on stage, <laughs> yeah. which we'll hear from our guests. We have Thomas Middleditch on this episode of Not Too Deep, which is so exciting. Yeah, very exciting. He's I've so known funny. Thomas since back in New York days, like long, long time ago. And the funniest thing, which I didn't, I forgot to bring up with him, because uh, spoiler alert, he's a hilarious guest. Get ready for some tales, some goof spoofs, his fascination and almost maybe obsession with reality television which oh yeah it sounds like obsession <laughs> right up my alley right up my alley um thomas and i were both at um chemistry tests for silicon valley and oh, we were yeah put, you told me about this, this yeah is crazy. we were put in it was yeah years ago when i like first moved to la or maybe i wasn't even living here yet um, it was so random that I got like brought in. You chem read with him. Well, not with him. So I came in one and I guess I, I auditioned for Silicon Valley. It's all kind of a blur. And then I, I remember going up north to San Francisco and seeing a Pentatonix concert with my brother because it was like my Christmas gift to him in San Francisco. And then when I was coming back from San Francisco, I got a call that I had to get right off the plane to go to a producer's meeting with Mike Judge and like sit in with him and someone else and talk about the character. Whoa. And then it came back another time for the chemistry test. And actually Terrence Southern, another YouTuber was there for the chemistry test too. And they brought all these people in and then they put it, they sequestered us in like groups of three oh, wow. in different rooms. And I was in the room with Thomas and some other girl. And it was this weird boardroom in the HBO building. And uh, we were there for, you know, they're just like, yeah, just hang here and we'll call you eventually. So you just don't know what how long you're going to be there. Sure. And we're all kind of nervous and we're reading our stuff. And Thomas and I like kind of knew each other from New York. So we're like trying to have polite conversation and like event talking about the project and the script's really funny. And like he knew Mike Judge and all of that. And then I realized when I look at the page, I'm like, oh, you're this is Thomas is the character's name in the script that it's this is this about is you. you. They wrote this for you. And he was just like, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, <laughs> I'm auditioning, like, you know, the whole thing. And I was like, oh, no, this is. It was like this wonderful, like literal, actual cartoon light bulb above my head that just turned on. Right. And I was like, oh, you, this is you. This is that cool. This is really cool. Yeah. And then um, and the, I think the character that I went in for actually like morphed into, they took like 
two girl characters and morphed it into one. I don't even know. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, but it was a character like I wasn't. It was like a very sexy, powerful, like executive sort of girl. Uh, oh, so like Grace Helbig. And basically me personified. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I remember being like, I'm... I'm, I'm either doing acting or I'm just playing a cartoon character because I can't yeah. relate to this person at sure. all. Uh, and it was very nerve wracking, um, but also just like so silly in hindsight. I remember being so nervous about it at the time. And then in hindsight, it's just so goofy to be like, yeah, like like lab rats, they put you in a bunch of rooms and then you get a knock and which one of us is going to get chosen to right. go down there. Right. Um, it's just so fun. And we just voluntarily put ourselves in those situations. Yeah. Cool. That's the life of the actor. Yeah, but you like Silicon Valley. I have to catch up on it. I'm a huge fan of that show. I think it's so funny and so smart. And it was like a definitely like a touchstone for us on like it's a lot of so different well. projects. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's what's great about it is it this it's like which I sort of talk about in the episode a little bit. It mm -hmm. satirizes Silicon Valley as well as sort of a love letter to Silicon Valley at yeah. the same time. And that's a really difficult line, I think, to tread. And they do it so expertly well on that show. Um, and it's just interesting, too, to see because he plays such a uh, needling sort of wimpy, um, but like good hearted guy on the show. Yeah. And then like the actual Thomas Middleditch is actually pretty dry. And uh, he's got kind of like an acerbic sarcasm to him, which yeah. is like which you don't see on the show, which is interesting. Yeah, but I do think all the characters from the few episodes that I have seen and from seeing like Kumail and Zach Woods do perform comedy outside of yeah, sure. it. I feel like all the characters are just really heightened versions of, of like them. one personality facet that yeah. they strongly have in them. Sure. And it feels a lot like the cast of Friends where you're like, oh, you, you can tell you you believe these characters, even though they're kind of ridiculous so yeah. purely because they seem just like this is probably part of who they are in real life. Right. Yeah. It just feels like that, that the casting is really well done. Yeah, it really is. And I, I really enjoy watching it. And it's cool, too, because it's like, you know, that the entire cast, like almost all of them come from an improv background. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I'm sure that just really elevates it. Yeah. Do they put out bloopers? I should have asked them that of like, or there's got to be extended scenes. There there's got to be, be stuff, They stuff. must exist. Yeah. There's got to be some stuff that they just goof. I mean, he says they goof and spoof on set all day. Yeah. I imagine they it. would. Without any more hesitation, let's get on to this hilarious comedy man renaissance man of comedy and creativity, Thomas Middleditch. Yay. No, no, not too deep. With Grace Heidbeck. Jack, guess what? Um, I give up. Today's support for Not Too Deep comes from Squarespace. Ah, uh, our good buddies. Yes. Hi, guys. You know what they say? They say, think it, dream it, make it with Squarespace. And you know why they say that? Because why? they've got beautiful templates created by world-class designers. They make it easy to turn your idea into a new and unique website. Let me guess, you can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products, and it's all optimized for mobile right out of the box with built-in search engine optimization? Not only can it do all of those things, but you can also showcase your work, blog, or publish content, announce a special project, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. And you can use Squarespace's analytics to help you grow in real time. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Though if you do have a question, Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support is there to help. Keep on dreaming, but make it a reality with a website from Squarespace. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, use the offer code GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, offer code GRACE. No, not too deep. Hey, Grace. What's up, Jack? How's it going? I mean, it's good, but I'm hungry. Oh, well... It's you're in luck because support for today's show comes from our good buddies at Freshly. Oh, I like these guys. Are you tired of spending hours on dinner and trying to master those meal kits? Uh-huh. Freshly is the new way to get a dinner on the table in no time. Tell me more. Well, here's the thing. Their chefs actually cook and deliver delicious, freshly prepared meals so that you can eat healthier without any of the work. I like that. Which is right up my alley because mm -hmm. uh, I'm bad at cooking. True. Each meal is made to order just for you and with a rotating weekly menu of more than 30 options, which is incredible, mm -hmm. there's always something new to try. And better yet, Freshly's chefs and nutritionists make sure that every meal is all natural, nutritious, and made with high quality ingredients. So you can come home late and still have a delicious chef cooked meal waiting for you. But okay, give me an example. What, what do they got? Okay, I mean, they've got all different kinds and um, they're all sound absolutely delicious. One that... um 
I really liked mm -hmm. is the uh, Southwest Chicken Bowl. Oh. I mean, it's just the level of quality of the ingredients is so high. It's got grains, like lentils and quinoa. And mm -hmm. as you know, I like saying the word quinoa. Yeah, it's your, one of your favorites. One of my favorites. Uh, but it's also got corn, black beans, sweet potatoes, chicken, all that good stuff. And it's just like super filling, but it has like this like little bit of a spicy kick. Really delicious. Fun. So order Freshly today and see what it's like to put zero effort into making dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash grace to get $20 off your first six dinners. That's $20 off plus free shipping at Freshly.com slash grace. It's Thomas Middleditch, everybody. The one and only. Oh, Perfect. so there's no yeah. sound effects? <laughs> <laughs> okay, put them well, in later. Uh, okay, okay, it's okay, like okay. reacting in Godzilla. You just react uh, to what you think the sound effect was. Yes, yes. I was maybe hoping for a soundboard of wacky sound effects <laughs> <laughs> that we could use. We should upgrade to that eventually. Uh, up, 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 upgrade. I mean, <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> we could that can we keep there. that one? Yes, you Thank can you. clip that into Thank a soundbite you. every time anyone says upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm assuming comes up a lot. Yeah, we talk about our software updates <laughs> yeah. all the time. Yeah, but it won't work for the word update. Only upgrade. You have to say up, you know, upgrade. So upgrade. I could imagine if you, you know, you have a lot of air miles and you upgraded to biz class mm -hmm. or something or economy plus. <laughs> That's true. That's sure. true. What's your preferred way of flying? Do you have like... Rear of the plane. Very back, middle seat. Back, back middle seat <laughs> next yeah. to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and broken in. air conditioning. Yeah, and two screaming children on either side. <laughs> Just a sweet sandwich. And, I, and, and like you can't rationalize with them. Like there's maybe something... Um, going on mentally so you just have to be like you look to the parents like I'm in over my head are you and they're asleep because they've already checked out years ago yeah big time and you're left yeah. to raise these two children and now, now I have to raise the children so favorite way to fly that <laughs> your house is riddled with kids yeah. that's great um, but okay so you said you were doing a little bit of traveling is it you're promoting Silicon Valley uh, there's some Silicon Valley promotion. Mm -hmm. There's some touring uh, live comedy improv make yeah. up goofs with uh, Ben Schwartz. Fun. He and I have a show called Middle Ditch and Schwartz. If, Creative title. <laughs> yeah. Just let you know who's in it. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. If you don't like who's on stage, you knew walking in. Yeah, exactly. You can't be surprised. Yeah. Um, and well, there's all kinds of dates. I don't know. If you're in Nashville, go to that one. When's this? When's this coming out? When do we? In think? a couple of weeks, we our schedule's pretty mid -April. flexible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mid April, I would say. Okay, perfect. Yeah, go to Nashville, Tennessee, and cool. that'll be great. We'll see you there. Do you have a favorite place to perform, other than obviously Nashville? Here in Los Angeles, I like to perform at really? the Largo. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying, if we're here in Los if Angeles, if we're here, and we're talking Los Angeles, yeah, we're talking LA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Largo at the Coronet, Ooh. and. Uh, yeah, he and I performed there. The Improvised Shakespeare performs there. And when he was alive, Elliot Smith used to perform there, which is very important for me because I am a sad sack. There you go. For, you know. Therefore, a huge Elliot Smith fan. Yeah. Oh, God. He's the most beautiful one. <laughs> That's cool that you um you do improvised Shakespeare. Yes. Yeah, you've been doing this for a long time, right? Oh, nigh on 12 years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, were you just a Shakespeare? Back when FDR was president. <laughs> the liberal socialist pig FDR. <laughs> Go on. Yes, I'm a <laughs> MacArthur man. <laughs> now, were you just into Shakespeare growing up and this kind of morphed into no, this? No, I'm still not really super into Shakespeare. Fun. <laughs> yeah. You just like doing the improvised well, versions of his plays? I, I mean, it had to grow on me. I remember way back on I, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, Blaine Swin, the creator of the show, said, hey, man, I think we should do uh, an improvised show. We do a play, but in Shakespeare, Shakespeare talk. I was like, no way. That sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, for you know, it, it took a while for us to figure out how that show goes and who was really going to be uh, good in it. And, right. uh, uh, yeah, I think, well, if you are in doubt, which I understand <laughs> if i say hey come to the show called the improvised shakespeare no, I've company seen it before. we come out with rolled up pants and tunics <laughs> and start immediately with the these and thous you'll uh -huh. be like oh boy this is a groaner but i promise you it will it will at the very least blow your mind at the very most make you spontaneously shit yourself yeah it's very very impressive i saw it back in new york years ago yeah. and it was so good and it's all everyone was talking about like, it's the hot topic of 
Shakespeare never gets old. Shakespeare's uh, very trendy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very trendy. It's very hip, very now. He's very <laughs> billowy shirts are very festival uh, chic. They're yes. very now. Yeah. Um, well, that's amazing that you're still doing. Is it a rotating cast of people? Um, there's actually quite an extensive cast. They they still do like five shows a, a week in in Chicago where oh, it's, wow. where it was born and there's a touring company so like the the whole roster is quite expansive the yeah. shows that happen in Largo is anywhere from oh, it's it's like five of like the original cast members That's awesome. and then we've got like a sixth swinger in oh. case someone can't make it How do you bring in <laughs> someone new to the fold It doesn't happen <laughs> You live and die and yeah. that's it when yeah. someone dies that's when someone You've gets brought be in grandfathered in Yeah No uh, well, there new people get brought in in the Chicago cast there's probably auditions here and there but uh, I I don't even know most of those guys cuz you know it's been a while Yeah well uh, you moved from Canada to Chicago Canada to Chicago correct How was that transition and do you go back to Canada I go back to Canada to visit families. Yeah. Uh, and to, you know, just set foot in my native homeland. <laughs> Do you remember what a nice country feels like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a courteous nation. <laughs> uh, yeah, it that happens. Um, but the move was interesting. I mean, uh, you know. Well, we Trump, don't want Trump any stories is, on this. Trump and Co. <laughs> is, is, is building the, wrong, the, the wall on the wrong side. I came over <laughs> fully illegally and stayed for like two years as really? an illegal immigrant. Oh, wow, and then really? got my green card and, well, visa and then green yeah. card and all that kind of stuff. How was so. your process of getting visa green card years ago? Uh, well, let's see. I was there in Chicago walking dogs for cash money. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was the guy they'd bring in when they didn't want the dogs anymore. So walking dogs and then killing them. Perfect. JK, JK, JK. <laughs> Although I did come home to a dead dog once. What? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. How? It's kind of, it's very sad. Yeah, I mean, the log <laughs> line is not a good one. Yeah, yeah. I forget, no, it sucks because I forget the, the dog's name. It was either Hank or Norm. Okay. But he was a big, you know, British bulldog. Oh. And... I came home and the girlfriend of the guy, the owner was there and I'm like, oh, oh, do you not need me to walk the yeah, dog? Yeah. And she was like, no, no, walk him. And I was like, okay, great. And I'm looking for him, can't find him. There's a dog barking. You can probably hear it. That's oh, yeah. not the ghost of the no, dog. No, I was like. <laughs> Just in case if anyone's listening, they're like, oh my God. It follows him everywhere. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> I told you, Diane. I told you spirits are real. <laughs> Thomas, I don't hear any dog. I don't know what you're talking about. What? Yeah. Oh, I see through time. <laughs> uh, but so then I looked around and then and then I was like, Hank's not here. Norm's not here. And she's like, oh my God. She runs upstairs to their little upstairs deck. Uh -huh. And then she comes down crying. And she had accidentally left the dog up there <gasps> in the sun in the summer. And bulldogs do not do well in the heat. Oh my and God. And he died from heat exhaust. Oh no. And I got very stiff, flies on his eyes and stuff. Oh and I carried him God. down. Oh my God. You had to kill. Uh... And it was, uh, it was sad. When did wow. the boyfriend walk in? In the I middle of your I was not there for that. <laughs> she was like, she was weeping and I, I was sad. And, and she's like, I, I think I was like, what do you need? Do you need me to stay? And she's like, no, go, go, go. Jesus. She like, wow. she must have felt so awful. I mean, it's like Ugh. a, have lapse. you guys connected since? We dated. Oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that formed, like tragedy brings people together. Yeah, we formed like a polyamorous society. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, going really well. You know, grief. Sometimes beautiful things come out of grief. Who knows? So true. Um, so how long did you live in Chicago for? Oh, about a few years. Cool. Three, I think we'll call it three. And then you went to New York. Yes, not before working on a cruise ship. You worked on a what? cruise ship? Yeah, Did you yeah. do comedy on a cruise ship? Yeah, the Second City Comedy Cruise. Yeah, what's that oh. like? I've heard of bits and pieces from other friends that have worked on cruise ships, but it seems pretty um, bonkers. It is kind of bonkers. It's a mix of... Uh, we the we were there before there was like the great reform of like, we got to give these entertainers more stuff to do. <laughs> so we were there when literally our work workload was maybe five hours a week. And a then week? the rest of the time, it's like free time on a boat oh, that no. is nice, but you can't escape. Yeah. Oh, so it's geez. a mix of like, I'm having fun. Oh no, I'm terribly lonely. Oh no, I'm homesick. 
Oh no, I'm stuck. Oh no, I'm stuck. Oh no, well there's I can get crepes anytime I want. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and I can watch this ice sculpture get made again, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And you're with fun folks. I mean, I liked all my cast. And there's other entertainers which are really fun. We our first round of entertainers, like the other there's this dance crew. Ooh. The oh. Gene and Ryan dance crew. Oh, shout out. Uh, yeah. What up, Gene and Ryan? <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, they had, they they switched cast halfway through and the first bunch were were all nice, but like not, not like, I don't know. We, we I gelled more with the second. Okay. And, you know, it was. Um, what is. It, I, y- how you long know, are you there these, for? You know, <laughs> this, I'm trying to debate. I'm trying to suss out your demographic and how debaucherous I, sh- I need to tell oh, no, these no. stories. We, you can get you can, very debaucherous. I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if there's any teens listening. <laughs> the teens are more they debaucherous wa- than I am. Well, these the days. teens would get be getting caught like fangering right. each other on the teen disco. <laughs> Yeah, what else are you going to do at a teen disco? Uh, okay, no joke. Fangering. Like, so, fangering each yeah, other. Just so, diddling. Diddling, diddling and twiddling. Like, these, these damn teens, the first half of this cruise, right, we poured out of New York City, and the first half of the cruise is, like, summer vacay stuff, like uh, Bermuda, Bahamas, this private island that the cruise lines owned, which was, like, super sad. Oh, <laughs> it, was no. like, it was like those comic strips, like the, the mound of sand, the coconut yeah. tree. Yeah, it was sure. like that with a bar. That's like right. a volleyball no. net. <laughs> yeah, the oh, thing God. that you imagine when you say when you're stranded on a desert island yeah. with someone. Exactly. Yeah. And it was not like the brochure of, like, well, a lush private <laughs> Anyway, so we go there, and it's, you know, working class Bronx, Jersey, Queens. Like yeah. I, th- I met my first like Guidos with the haircut, the Jersey yeah. Shore types. And this types. is what they've saved up all year for. Yeah. This and cruise. they're like, we're, fu- we're coming here to have fucking fun, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, like, it's pre-Jersey Shore. Oh, uh, it was maybe, no, Jersey Shore. Uh, you know, and, and I, at that time I had done a, I had done an internet video that got bought by McDonald's where I'm rapping about chicken nuggets. Right, and that so, makes sense. Yeah. So like you're before the show, you're anonymous. Then you do the show for like the whole ship of like 2000 p- oh, plus wow. people. And then after that show, everyone's like, holy shit, second city. Oh my God. Nuggets guy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, we'll buy you a shot. Let's buy you a shot. So then you just oh, walk no. around just, just getting wasted all day. Oh, oh wow. That's and then amazing. passengers being like, we have to, we have to. I'm like, you know, it's not, it's against the rules. Jeez. Then you like make these sh- disgusting little insidious like shore rendezvous. Fun. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of a darkness there. In the <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a real sad side to cruises. But like. if but for me, for someone like me who kind of like revels and relishes the dark bits, it was a real fun time. So what's the time frame that you're on one cruise? Not too long, like four months. Wow, that yeah. seems like a long time. In the grand scheme of things, to be it's living not. on a boat. Yeah, but then you you leave and you're like, oh my god, four oh, months. You come back and everything's the same. Yeah, right, right, that's true. Yeah. Tony then, got a commercial. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and you get to go on like the excursions and stuff, like when they yeah. dock, right? Yeah, it was actually a pretty sweet deal. Like they, we were kind of a mix between. I don't know, like crew and passengers. So like oh, yeah. there, there's all these different tiers and ranks and stuff. Yeah, and so you can float between both of them. Oh yeah, it was a real... You're real a shapeshifter. Easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Odo yeah. from Deep Space Nine. What the hell? Wow. That's in your brain. Right. Why <laughs> am I talking about Odo right now? <laughs> I mean, you don't know our demo. <laughs> <laughs> you like, Yeah, you got like late 30s Trekkies, right? That's yeah, your demo? <laughs> that's a sweet spot. Yeah, it's really good for us. Uh, they love Whoopi. The, um, Who don't? <laughs> I always forget that she's in Star Trek. Yeah, she played Guinan. Yeah, she want, She at, called up and was just like, I want a part. And they were like, yeah, you can have one. We'll make That's you, how we'll the make, story goes? We'll make, yeah. you, we'll make you the bartender. She's wow. like, there's not yeah. enough black people and not enough women. Give me a part. And they were in like, Star Trek. okay. Yeah. yeah. Is, awesome. Was she a Trekkie or was she? Is, was that like just... I don't. I wasn't into the show very much. I've listened to Hannah explain this to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't times. know that she was a big fan, but I think she liked it enough to like complain. Yeah. And oh, it's then, a big... Sh- it was, a, you know, at the time, that was the third... Major installment of the Trek, yeah, the Next Trek? Generation. I thought that was no. The second. Oh, I'm talking about Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Generation is number two. Yes, yeah, you're yeah. correct. And Deep Space Nine is like that was the third. Deep yeah. Six Nine. Deep Space no, Nine. No, Deep Space Nine. You got it right. Because then there's another one called like Deep Six Blue or something. <laughs> Remember with the young boy who, with the young man who killed himself. It was there was a sub. It was an underwater. <laughs> An underwater Water supposed world. to be like an underwater. Big Hero 6. No, no, it's an underwater base. And Atlantis. 
kind of like that, but you know, not like well, I'm King Neptune. <laughs> well, it's more, it's man-made and the underwater. And it's, I want to say Jonathan pic- Taylor Thomas. That's not it. It's like the oh, same era. Oh, it, was of like that the, dude. it was like the Sea Lab. Sea Lab. Deep space. Deep lad. Landis. Yes. The one with Brandis. the dolphin. Yes, I remember. No, no, I remember yes, that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're this so is the pitch meeting. Gonna, we are being too. screamed at. <laughs> <laughs> there are people listening to this screaming. <laughs> they hate it. There's no way you can scream loud enough for us to hear it. Especially your scream would travel back through time Sequest. and get to our brains. <laughs> <laughs> Sequest. That's what it was called. Sequest. There oh, you yeah. go. Well Sequest done. 2012, I believe. Oh, wow. If only. No, no. Tw- Sequest 2032 oh, is what okay, it was good. called. You can hear the size of relief of everyone <laughs> going, thank God they got there. I Finally. forgot Jesus. I forgot that show existed. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff like that. Um, but on the opposite end of that, you know, genre of um, entertainment, okay. <laughs> you like The Bachelor and oh, The Bachelorette. Oh, oh. I'm so yeah. into it. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. past season, I hate Ari. I disagree. Ari's a doof. He's a doof. No. He's, a, he's one entire doof troop in no. one man. No. Look, everybody on the show is a doof trooper. Oh, 100%. Well, not everybody. Except I thought Caitlin was pretty cool. She was cool, but also that guy Waboom, the season Waboom. before. I love Waboom. I like Waboom too. I get Waboom. I know who Waboom is. I, I've met Waboom. Part Waboom's. of me is Waboom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Waboom is like me before I figured out, oh, I got to tone it down a notch. <laughs> Oh, exactly. <laughs> but but Ari, everybody's dumping on Ari. Okay, Ari give me a did good his argument. Best, what you want mm-hmm. out of a good bachelor, bachelor con. Break uh, it down. Uh, lead, uh, not contestant, the main one. The bachelor or the bachelorette. Yes, the the titular the, character. Let's call him the protagonist. What you want out of a good protag <laughs> <laughs> is earnestness, and I hate that in real life. Like too much earnestness. I'm like you suck Sincerity, to talk to. There's yeah. too, you like you don't get that yes. life is bullshit, and yeah. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> But but in a, in the contestant in the main and the pro tag, that's what you want because you want them to be tr- wrestling with how to do right by everything. You want them to have an emotional struggle. Yeah, if they are the kooky one, right. It's it's hard to get invested in. You need a Fair. nice person surrounded by maniacs. But see, I didn't yeah, see him as that's that. That's true. I totally did. I did not. I was Every like, time this you let guy... someone go, but then he we... was so like he was so emotionally he was playing sensitive the about part it. of it. I think he is really that. I Although think he's a, his pick. I don't a, know. Uh, but yeah. I don't want to throw her to this. Maybe she's got a secret sweetness that is like she's so funny. She's just not going to ever leave him. And he's going to go DM all those exactly. other girls because he got the taste of what it's like to be loved by 30 women oh, yeah. for a brief moment yeah, in time. Yeah, 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 and now yeah, yeah, yeah. he's addicted to that drug. <laughs> yeah, but everybody is in that show. <laughs> everybody is. And everybody poo-poos on Ari for dealing with this situation. Now, look, I would have never gotten rid of Lauren. Uh, no, not uh, Becca. Black hair, who's now uh, Becca yeah. Burnett, who's now the Bachelorette. Uh, bachelorette, never in a million years met her. Mm-hmm. She's more gorgeous than you could ever imagine, and she was one of the few that had like a real fun sort of like down to earth purse. Yeah, she seemed L-A-T. genuine, <laughs> and actually argue. had a sense of humor. Yes, most mm-hmm. people don't in that show. It's very yes. strange. It's almost as if they're psychopaths. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've become loose pals with Elan, the one of the producers. You okay. catch him every now and then. He's got a big beard. Oh yeah, Memory looks... follows him on uh, on in- in- Instagram, and then we went on Caitlin Bristol's podcast and got some inside deets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just want to hear more and more and more about it. Yeah. Well, the good news is. Uh, he's produced other reality TV shows. Right, and, and they're he, all friends. Like, a bunch of contestants are all... She's like, yeah, I drink with him all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, we're buds. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He, his... I was like, give me just, like, the overall sentiment of, like, uh, is what we're watching just completely and utterly fabricated or yeah. is it real? And he's like, no. I mean, it's one of the real reality TV shows. Like, you take this and, like, Pawn Stars, right. where they're clearly like, today we're at, you know... Gofi's go karts, and I gotta look at a go kart because <laughs> right. I gotta make a hundred bucks, uh, and I say no deal. But you know that's Chumley, like different. Chumley or Chumley yeah. is one of the greatest TV reality stars of our generation, <laughs> and you can't deny yeah. it. <laughs> My dad doesn't know a fart from a fiddlestick. <laughs> <laughs> and all that stuff, right? So it's so different from that. So what you are getting is people. What you are getting is people struggling with what it is. Mm-hmm. Like I, I went to set and I, you see these two yeah, people. Yeah, you recently went and visited the set as a secret spy. Now there's <laughs> Wait, not much. While I they can were really, filming, yes, <gasps> at the house. You were on a hot Whoa. set. Yeah, I was on a hot set. Did, were they just watering down everything to make everything moist? Yeah, everything was moist. Yeah. <laughs> 
That was VVV moist, <laughs> not just the set. Hey, oh, gross. Gross. <laughs> My mouth, just normally what everyone's is. Uh, uh, well, but yeah, so what happened is I saw a glimpse of a date, you know, because it's like a uh, a rose night, right? Oh, so it's a in ceremony. a rose night, they get everybody gets free time. Like you saw the, the scrambling, saw the gowns. Time. Everyone's, yeah. can I? Can I steal you for a minute? Can I steal you for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, guys trying to like do something fun with uh, Becca. And mm -hmm. it, it's what you're seeing is two people trying to have a date. Imagine you and I were on a date, or you and I. Mm -hmm. You and I. You and I. <laughs> I like the odds. <laughs> we're on a date and we're just trying to get connection. And we know there's only fucking four minutes right. to get this connection. So there's a panic. And on top of that, there's a camera who's trying to capture it and you know that millions of people are watching yeah. you. For, for, for a guy like me or uh, us who have had experience on camera, that's a tough sell. Mm -hmm. But imagine like Buddy from Iowa who's oh, like, right. I don't even know. I mean, I get nervous talking in front of my company. Right. It th that's the real that's also that's part of the reality is the is my point. It's like you're watching you're watching real people, but you're also watching the reality of the reality. There's show. many layers. It's that, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. I like staved off from it for so long, yeah, and same. then I was like, ugh, all my friends are watching this. I love all shitty reality TV. I yeah. just wasn't into that one for whatever reason. Yeah. And then now I'm like big in went straight into Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, like yeah. checked in on all of it, and it's. It's just so bonkers. I also watch Unreal. Do you oh, watch yeah. that? Uh, uh, no. People say to watch it. I'm like, but it's not real. It's. Not, I mean, I, I understand it's based off yeah, of this stuff, but I like watching real people suffer. Yeah, but it's. <laughs> but there are weird parallels because stuff that happens in Unreal seasons past start happening on the actual Bachelor that you're like, they're just predicting all of these like that psychological trends. That it's, sounds great, but I want to see real genuine misery. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm fascinated because they take away their phones and they live in isolation yes. and they're susceptible to just like persuasion of these producers that yes. are and playing there's a lot these of alcohol. chess. There's a bit. Oh, and then they, yeah, Crystal was like, or uh, Caitlin was like, you're pumped full of alcohol from like 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. You do the rose ceremony and she was the bachelorette. And she's like, I kept having to go in the back because they give me a Rolodex of all the men, all their names. Yeah, because I can't, can't remember all their yeah. names. So it looks like a dramatic pause that I'm like trying to think of, you know, which one to cut. But really, I just can't fucking remember the guy's name. Yeah. And she has to go you, back. Black and like, hair. And then she's, like, uh, she's like, there <laughs> were times where I was like, Brian. And then one guy walked forward and she's like, oh, okay, it's that guy. Huh? He can say. Like, she <laughs> I was like that. I want to hear <laughs> everything about that. Yes. It's Another big question I had, I was like, you know, because anytime they're on a date, right? Yeah. They are exclusively just saying like, I just think it's so amazing that we are about to take the, take the next step to almost being closer to being close together. <laughs> you know, it's like yes. they don't talk about anything except how content they are with like appreciating the other person in this. I side. can see myself with him. Yes. A lot of I can see myself yes. falling in love with him. That's A, because they really don't get, get very much time together. Mm -mm. But I'm like, don't they talk about like religion? politics like things that would be deal breakers for yeah, yeah, right. like, oh you're devout in anything not for me yeah. oh you're a Trump guy or girl not for me yeah. like that's just me right like how that's, many those kids are, do you want to have yeah how many yeah. kids I want zero maybe one max you want ten we're out yeah yeah. like the big the big things because um, I just would assume that that would come up and he's like honestly it doesn't you know that's I so thought they cut, cut out because it would be yeah, maybe that's polarizing what I would assume right? too, for the show everybody, itself I think maybe they do a little bit, but I also it it like for a lot of people it doesn't it's not as important, which is strange. You it's, don't see like the contestants sort of take themselves out of the race because they're suddenly like, oh, well, he doesn't want to have kids, or he doesn't want to live. Yeah. In the, well, he doesn't want to live on the West like, Coast. Like, so sometimes they I'm take out. themselves out. That one girl took herself out because she wanted to go back to school and get a degree in like psychology or something, yeah. and he like clearly was like. What? You're not going to come gonna move my back wife? to Arizona? <laughs> then why'd you sign up, babe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. I always, and then I was wondering, like, okay, so it's very clear sometimes that one of the contestants has the most connection. I guess you wouldn't know it, but like, I would, you know, yeah. you see behind yeah. and you're like, oh, that that little moment is so much more genuine. Relax. Then then forget thing. the cameras, mm -hmm. this, that. So, what if you're a contestant and you see that? And you're like, well, I don't really have that. 
like, where are you emotionally in this in Oh, this that's journey the most now? interesting part, yeah. You're like, I know it's not me, but I guess I'll stick around because it might be fun. Right. Because I'm on a TV show and holy shit, this, this is, is so first... weird. Maybe I'll be part of Bachelor Royalty. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is the first season I've heard them talk about when they get cut, they're most upset, not about Ari, but about leaving their friends, their oh, yeah. new oh, friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I feel like it is getting like, they're getting rushed into this sorority that they now get to be part of for the rest of their lives. If there's something special about them, if right. they're too, if they're debaucherous enough, cute enough, have enough personality or just a total mess, if they you have get something to come memorable. back into Bachelor in Paradise yeah. and try again. And if you keep having something interesting about you, you stick around. It's yeah. super interesting. And weird. It's fascinating. Also, uh, I you could maybe I'm reading into this too much, but when OMG. they announced Becca as the new Bachelorette, you could see like a moment that all the girls that thought like Tia and them that yeah. might have thought that they were going to be the next yeah. Bachelorette were like, hmm, okay, <laughs> yes, yes, yay, my friend, yay, I'm so happy for you. Like when the other yeah. person wins the Oscar, you yeah, have to clap for them. <laughs> it's so bizarre. <laughs> but okay, here's a quick question, and then we'll take a break and answer some Twitter questions. Oh, um, great. Twitter, it, my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the one social platform that you deleted. <laughs> yeah. two, one of two. <laughs> oh, what's the other one? Facebook. I got rid of that. Oh yeah, that's, that's been that's, gone for a couple of years. Yeah, you that's, still have your MySpace. Yeah, I got yeah. my MySpace and my friends to full blown. They're rocking and rolling. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if you were going to be a contestant on The Bachelorette? What would your intro be the first night? You know how they all do like a oh, stylized my. intro, where oh, like they walk my. up and they walk up with like a marching band and be like. <laughs> the one that still sticks in my mind is that dude. He was too wacky. He left I think that night, but the dude who rolled up in a hot tub car. He was I Canadian. didn't see that one. Oh yeah, uh, he's Canadian. I think so. Yeah. We said that, we said that was a really bad suit. I mean, it was like, oh no. I mean, that's, I mean, that's pretty great. It is. That is. That is stellar. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That it's tough. It's jet the jetpack. Jet <laughs> it's one of those water jetpacks. I, if I could do something funny, like come in on a jetpack, but then not even say hi, or just be like, "Hey, I'm Thomas," and then go. That's <laughs> my. I want to go straight to the bar and be like, "We'll talk eventually," and then just walk straight past them. I feel yeah. like it'd be slightly memorable. Yeah. Um, well, I could talk about The Bachelor and Bachelorette for hours, but we got to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with um, Thomas's favorite social media platform questions. Right after this, more not too deep. Powerful magic, a deadly legacy, and a world on the edge of war. The Black Witch by Lori Forrest is a must read epic fantasy, perfect for fans of Harry Potter and Tamara Pierce. Are you guys looking for something to read? Because you should check this out. This book sounds really awesome. Mm -hmm. It's set in an imaginative and intoxicating university where people from all sorts of magical races, backgrounds, and cultures coexist and have to cooperate with each other. The Black Witch follows one teen named Ellerin who is forced to confront her own people's dark history. Mm -hmm. And in the process, she discovers that sometimes acting heroic means giving up on the hero she was born to be and instead learning to trust the very people that she was taught to hate and fear. Ooh, twist. With a diverse cast of complex and captivating characters and a rich, detailed world, this fast-moving, page-turning plot will suck you in completely. New York Times bestselling author Robin Hobb called it refreshing and powerful. Number one New York Times bestseller Tamara Pierce loved its, quote, whole new thrilling approach to fantasy. So don't miss this powerful story about challenging beliefs, confronting prejudice, and battling oppression. The Black Witch by Lori Forrest, available now wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Not, not too deep. Today's show is sponsored by Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. Can't imagine fitting anything else into your life? Well, with Talkspace, therapy is as easy as sending your therapist a message. Get something off your chest whenever you need to. Talk about everyday challenges at work or at home. Or just chat about life. And there's no extra commutes, no leaving the office, and no judgments. And I, for one, am a big fan of that because I spend too much time in my car as it is. And you get judged by me a lot on this podcast. So. <laughs> yes, that's very true. <laughs> so I like both of those things. No commutes and no judgments. Right? Sign me up. Well, all you need is a computer with an internet connection or the Talkspace mobile app, and you can improve your mental health. Remember that therapy isn't just about venting your innermost thoughts or digging into childhood memories. It's also about practical everyday strategies for stress management and living a happier life. Having a therapist simply provides you a designated person to talk to who is trained to listen and help you make positive changes to your life. And the Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists 
who are experienced in addressing life challenges we all face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com slash Grace and use the offer code Grace, G-R-A-C-E, to get $45 off your first month and to show your support for this show. That's G-R-A-C-E and Talkspace.com slash Grace. We're back with Thomas Middleditch. Hi, welcome another, back. One, another one for our soundboard. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you uh, first the two questions I ask every guest that's on the podcast. And the first one is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Oh, the cold spaghetti. Mm-hmm. The cold spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> of the variety of temperatures. The cold one. Cold spaghetti. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, Chef Boyardee. He'd know what to do with it. <laughs> You're like, oh, I gotta warm this up. And then I'd get hot, saucy spaghetti in return. Yeah. It's a good investment. It's like an edible ATM machine. It's yeah. perfect. Insert cold spaghetti, yeah. get back hot meal. Oh, pretty great. Okay, the other question um, is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So mine is college jogging front lawn. Oh. <laughs> oh. But it didn't happen to me, but I saw it. You okay. Saw, okay. Uh, I'm going to count New Year's as one word. Okay, yeah, you can use small phrases. New Year's. New Year's, okay. Uh, bathtub. Okay. Green. Oh, oh no. All right, well, no follow-up questions yeah, for that. Yeah, I think that one's pretty clear. Uh, all right, let's get into these Twitter questions. Um, the Twitties. Why did you delete your Twitter? That's my question. That's not about Twitter. Um, well, uh, I mean, I, I can fundamentally understand why it's a very toxic playground. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's mainly it. I think he, I have a love hate relationship with the internet as a whole. Like, yeah. I love. I mean, like, I'm a viral videos nut. I'm a gamer. Like, I love what the internet has done for me and for us. Mm -hmm. But I also think, especially lately, especially since in the past X amount of years, it's been aggregated into such a way where you, everyone's search results are different. Like the internet is yeah. catered towards your history, yes, which creates a polarizing echoey chamber, the stuff that everyone's talking about. And yeah. Twitter is like the hyper version of that. Yeah, It's polarized. It's angry as all hell. Mm -hmm. I found myself being an angrier person and putting angry posts out there into the world, which I don't want to do. Yeah. And, and because it can be manipulated so easily with hashtags and trends and, and pushing things, you can create fake trends when they're not oh, with, true. with bots and minions. Mm -hmm. And it's not just been in our election, it's been other elections and other movements. And I have just decided to unsubscribe. I just think I don't need to be a part of it. I don't like it. I would love it if the company went under and it just disbanded. But that won't happen. I wouldn't. I don't think Trump would be president if it were for Twitter. Yeah, and I'm so I don't you. like it. I don't want anything to do with it. I think you made the smarter choice and to continue to engage at that <laughs> point. That it's like at some point you have to like. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. I wasn't changing anyone's minds. I wasn't good at it. I wasn't good at 140 characters or whatever it is now. Yeah. I didn't do it. I, I. I. And then it becomes stressful. Yeah. When it's this thing that you feel obligated to be. It's it's it became Frodo's ring for me. <laughs> I looked at it, I wanted to, and I peeked inside, and as soon as I did, ring wraiths were at my fucking neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd whip it off and be like, oh my God. And yeah. then it's just better to just throw it in the goddamn uh, Mordor's <laughs> lava well, pit. Yeah, jealous of the freedom that you are living within. God bless. Um, on a different uh, social media platform, someone wants to know which Snapchat or Instagram character is your favorite to do. <laughs> are you still on board with Instagram story and Snapchat and all of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably hypocritical. You know, I throw Facebook under the bus and they own <laughs> Instagram. I think just for me, Instagram, I can control whatever I see or whatever I do or whatever, whoever comments on the thing. I, I get to control it more. Yeah. And it's kind of like a YouTube channel in that you can cultivate a, a more positive following mm -hmm. where you're like, that doesn't happen here. Yeah, you can curate your comments. You can there curate, you yeah, a community that is much more, yeah, positive and influential on yeah. two sides than... Yeah. I think so, but yeah. maybe I'm kidding myself. 
Um, I don't know of the Snapchat stuff. Oh, uh, I think I think one of my favorite ones. There was this sna- wonderful filter on Snapchat that made you kind of look like this like buck tooth little girl. <laughs> yes, I know and, you're talking about. And, <laughs> and the one I like to do is like she was obsessed with Zach Woods and wanted him to like <laughs> like just do all kinds of things to her and like love her and stuff like that. That that one's uh that one's a favorite. There you go. Uh it, do you have a Snapchat filter you wish existed? Um or one that's been taken away that you wish was back? They do rotate them. I wish that was like there's yeah. some like that and then Tony this Tony Salamanca F, I wish he was kind of like frequent more. I wish you could kind of favorite them and be like great you could like or at least yeah, let's do a microtransaction. Buy them for 50 cents yeah. so you can put them in your library. I'll do it. There you go. That I sounds mean, it's great. It's fun to log on and be like which one's there? Yeah. But if none of them are good or if they're all like branded yeah, yeah. Or if it's like, like I don't want to sell flowers. Yeah, I don't want to sell the next Chris yeah. Ro- Chris Rock <laughs> movie or well, not Chris Rock. Chris, Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, Coley Love wants to know: Ask if he still hangs out with Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah, whenever I can. <laughs> whenever he's not in England doing goddamn plays. What's the story with Patrick Stewart? He and I became friends through that improvised Shakespeare company. He group. seems like the greatest human being of all time. He is a real sweet man. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting to have such like a little bond with him. You know, he's considerably older. Sure. Um, but, but he's we young both, at heart. He is. Yeah. And we both have similar senses in humor. And really, that that's what will get me. That's what will make me be your friend. Quadruple take video online of explaining the quadruple take is absolutely fantastic if you haven't seen it <laughs> highly recommend also videos of him playing with his dog in the pool mm-hmm. is just god it melts your heart it's so sweet <laughs> such a sweet man uh sammy Sue wants to know who is your favorite harry potter character if he's not mm. if he says he's not a fan kick him off your set well that got I didn't read well, the second half of that I don't first. Think, I mean, hey, newsflash, this ain't a set. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, this is a house. It's a house. <laughs> uh, well, I would say that I, 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 you know, sacrilege. I haven't read the books. I didn't sort of get into it. Sure. Uh, however, as I like watch the movies first, first couple are like kid detective movies. And I was kind of like, I don't know. And then they started kind of getting you know, a little bit taking themselves more seriously. And they get and, dark. Yeah. By the end of it, I was like, I, yeah, I like Harry Potter. Why yeah. not? <laughs> um, uh, I always figure, I mean, at the end, they turn diabolically evil, mm-hmm. but I always thought how Slytherin was like the most realistic. They're kind of like, <laughs> that's what the Slytherin like, would say. I know. They're <laughs> kind of like what realistic. Republicans used to be of just being like, sorry, man, we got to do the hard work. I wish it was all flowers and roses and stuff, but life isn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they turned, then they turned into build that wall kind of. Yep, yep, it <laughs> yeah. turns really quickly. Um, someone says, does he play Overwatch? And if so, what's his rank? Oh, I don't. You're a big, you're a gamer. Love games. Okay. Love games. Haven't touched Overwatch. It's uh, it's it's not my bag of tea. What is your bag of tea? My bag of tea. I, I, like I've always enjoyed like very robust flight simulators where you like have to study how to like even turn on the <laughs> airplane. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do like, you just want to be a pilot? Yeah, I am one. <laughs> yeah. In my dreams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I really am one. That wait. So how? I where do you? Where, where do you play this? I, I play the games at home on a PC computer. Okay. A personal computer computer. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and, then I, and then I really fly a, a real plane uh, out of a small airport in um, Pacoima, California. Just, it's just That's awesome. north of Bob Hope Airport. That's just, super just, cool. Just for fun? Yeah, for fun and leisure and to soar amongst the birds. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, and to go to, to go to places. Like Harrison Ford. Yeah. Right? But if for to answer your game question, what I'm playing right now a lot of, mm-hmm. and you'll like this because anytime you say a video game title, it's it, you want to peel your own skin off. Sure. <laughs> Overwatch sounds chill. It's like Overwatch. Yeah. It okay. sounds like, yeah, that doesn't turn me out because I'm not a gamer person. Yeah. Spoiler alert. And uh, yeah, that's a game. I'm like, that sounds like something I could relate to possibly at sure. some point. It sounds like a digestible title. Well, this yeah. one, is like quintessentially kind of like a dork title. It's called Warhammer Vermintide 2. <laughs> That's a Mad Lib sentence. That's not a title. Vermintide. Well, you know, because there's a, a... Sounds like a Thai noodle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because there's a horde, there's hordes of the vermin race. Okay. Rat people and, and North folk who are kind of like zombie folk. Okay. And, you know, it's a, you know, it's a title. It's a Vermintide, you see, tidal wave of... of a uh, vermin. Of the vermin. Got it. Okay. Is a Warhammer like a... Like a like tabletop. Yeah, tabletop yeah. game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like uh, it's Dungeons expanded. and D&D. <laughs> Do you still play tabletop games? Yeah, I love uh, 
pen and paper role playing games like D and D. Oh yeah, GURPS, Call of Cthulhu, and all that kind of stuff. Did you? Were you a Pokemon person? I never was. For some reason, even I mean, it, I was the demographic, yeah. a dorky little what ten year old, twelve year old, and my, for some reason, I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> It's a fan. <laughs> I didn't it's like dork. It's for dorks and dweebs. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was getting like bullied relentlessly. But I thought Pokemon was lame. I thought Pogs were lame, and I and I thought um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were lame. And I should have loved all of them. To be fair, yeah, all have a you know level of lame to them for sure. Pogs is like stack these things and hit it with this other thing that weighs more and yeah. see which ones you get. <laughs> yeah, and if they flip, you get them. <laughs> yeah. Get them. But you can also buy them at a kiosk. Yeah, for, and like, they're it's like kind of gambling because. You could yeah. go in with a stack and then lose your stack, and you're like, "What the hell?" And if you lose Joey the, took my stack. Oh, I used to play all the time. <laughs> Everyone come with their pog stacks, and then uh, yeah, you would lose like your slammers. They would call them. Oh god, yeah, the slammers. I remember all the rat kids in shop class would just sol- solder these <laughs> massive discs of soldering goo <laughs> yeah. and oh into these hard, into huge, sl- massive discs, and they're like, "Do some new slammer." I'm like, "I'm pretty sure that's not regulation. <laughs> 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 pretty sure that wouldn't that wouldn't play in tournaments." Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're like war yeah. hammering like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'm hammering all the wars. Yeah. <laughs> um, Evie Sunsets wants to know what was his fondest memory working with College Humor? Oh. Because you did that for a while in New York, right? Actually, yes. Yeah. Um, the whole the whole thing really like Ace, you know, staying busy and kind of like making sure I'm I'm doing comedy and when that that element was fun. Mm-hmm. But really, I think my the best part of it all is meeting all the folks that I met there. Um, yeah, because they're a very they're all pals now. They're very much like a family. It feels like yeah, it was a weird little time of like internet sketch, mm-hmm. and it was its own sort of online SNL type thing, which totally. was just really. It was it was fun to be a part of. There was always something to do, and everyone that you worked with was super game. Yeah, and, e- and funny. Everyone was just like creatively thirsty. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like yeah, in your twenties where you just like want to make all things. Let and, me be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah. And now it's uh, just a different story. <laughs> just a <laughs> giant film of bitterness that washes over. Her. Uh, Hollywood just really has a way of taking that out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of friendship, mm-hmm. um, someone wants to know who's funnier to you, TJ, Zach, or Kumail? Um, I read somewhere that you say you guys are like a uh, HR PR nightmare because you guys just goof, goof and spoof all the time. We do goof, spoof, and <laughs> literally grab ass all day. <laughs> <laughs> and our jokes are inc- uh, like often incredibly inappropriate. <laughs> we sing songs that are just like, nope, you should not be singing that. <laughs> um, well, uh, Kumail and Zach have their own different ways of being utterly hilarious. I mean, Kumail is one of the funniest stand-up comedians I've ever seen. Yeah, he's great. And and Zach just says so many left field stuff that is so <laughs> into intricate and high minded and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So either either of them, they're great. Um, on that same note, Eric Ray wants to know Mary Kate or Ashley. Are you a Mary Kate and Ashley man? Fan? You know what? My instinct yeah. as a man is to go both. <laughs> but then in this at, patriarchy? Well, all well, hey, look, it's it's a it's a marriage 2.0 kind of world. Uh-huh. Um, guest <laughs> guest stars welcome. But <laughs> my my uh that sounds but, like an ABC family <laughs> pilot. <laughs> uh, that's more like a late night HBO. <laughs> but I uh yeah, anytime a guy's like, oh, Twins, man. It's like they forget that they're related. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those, are, those are family yeah. members. <laughs> yeah, I met Liz Olson the other the other some other night, and she's absolutely gorgeous. Oh yeah. There's all the Olsen twins are. I mean, the Olsen family is they like all look all the same. Test tube, just, beautiful, like yeah. so alien, other world, symmetrical and gorgeous. Yeah, it's like the, it's like the faces that they use in documentaries that show you like why faces are pretty for <laughs> symmetry. <laughs> You're just like that's just an Olsen face that I'm yeah. staring at. <laughs> (laughs) That's that that weird, like, elven. They're so elven. Yeah, they really are. To bring it back to (laughs) (laughs) D&D. So you'll stick with both. Yeah, yeah. Both, dude. And then I (laughs) just ride away on a skateboard. Perfect. Uh, Someone's asking, why do extroverts keep stealing the jobs of normal people? It's a very pointed question. What? (laughs) I didn't know that that was a 
problem in today's society. <laughs> I was like, is, there, is this a thing? That's, that's like is written this... by the most like jaded inside cat I could ever <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Why are these damn extroverts uh, <laughs> suing jobs from us normal people? And like <laughs> turns up the Morrissey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if this was like a you thing that. Uh, oh, I don't know that. Does, I mean, that's not. I don't think that's. I don't think that's a specific reference to anything I've done or that we've done. Would you any, say you're introverted or extroverted? I'd say I'm introverted that had to learn how to be extroverted. Extroverted. Mm -hmm. I like as a boy, boy, as a little boy, I was very alone, very shy. I, I have vivid memories of being in social, like a parent, like adult parties, and just burying my head in my mom's dress and like not coming out <laughs> uh, bullied a fair amount but I had like a silliness and then I and then the the learning was how to use the silliness to be your ally in social interactions yeah. mm -hmm. um, um, but still very much cherish alone time it's uh, partly why I still like being on the PC personal computer computer mm -hmm. <laughs> but do you feel that like um, because you're you came from up from improv, yeah, which is really putting yourself out there. Do you feel sure. like that was something like you had to step outside of your comfort zone, or do you feel like that was something that came very naturally? I think it was something that was that was told not to be there that the one then was given permission to be there. I think that's why a lot mm. of like artsy theater kids like find their tribe when they yeah. when they first get in their first play. Like for me, it was like eighth grade in a play. We had a short form improv team in, in like middle school, which is very fortunate. Wow! And all it was was a drama teacher. Ken Wilson, <laughs> a whole lot to that man. He just saw the weirdo and was like, I'm going to put you in this stuff. And then it was like, oh, it's okay. Like I'm allowed. If I do oh. this weird thing, I'm not going to get call called a gay lord and then yeah. like shoved down the bank. <laughs> like yeah. I can just be strange and it'll be okay. And oh, it's great. actually appreciated. Yeah. And then by the end of the year, all the kids that were bullying me were like, he's the class clown. He's okay. And I'm like, sweet, whatever. Yeah. It's just a label shift. That you it's, go from like weirdo to class clown. It's like clown. he's rebranded. <laughs> yeah. I totally rebranded. I did a McConaughey <laughs> comeback story. It's, you nailed it. You know, yeah. But I also think that that's a similar personality type for people in the comedy world is like this introverted, extroverted, like right teetering yeah. on the edge. Sure. The people that are out there, but also like value. Yeah. And you I don't know. think, I mean, if that, uh, depending on how influential... Nah, I, I don't think that you have to be an extrovert no. in order to get the jobs as the as their Twitter question sort of implies. <laughs> I think being a courteous and, and thoughtful person will and a hard worker will do a whole lot more. So that question is loaded with a certain um as angst or maybe jadedness. And I would true. encourage that person, if that is latent within you, to maybe expel that from your Soul. <laughs> there you go. That ended on a real sweet note. <laughs> no, I've had this because I'm I'm definitely an introvert, and people are like, "But you'd make stuff when you hang out with people, etc." But I'm, and I've always had the stigma growing up that introvert was negative or bad, and yeah. that you should want to be the life of the party. When really, introvert just means that you take your energy from being alone. Like you gain energy from being alone. Gain the power. Yeah, the what? The power. The power. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. The, the technical term for it. Yes. <laughs> the power. The power. It's all about getting the power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really is. And you if get you the power came, from all the different things. If you, you came must back be to Twitter for one day and just tweeted, it's all about getting the power, <laughs> and then deleted your account again. <laughs> no, because then I'd be, I don't know, someone would um, get angry at that. What do you mean Jews. by the power? Why can't you spell it the power? Yeah. No, it's the internet. Yeah. Jews will not replace <laughs> us. <laughs> oh, no. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's uh, Twitter. No, that yeah, is, that's really that's Twitter a really great impression of Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's like it was in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Abby Malabi wants to know Have you seen the new Queer Eye? Yes. I've f First to last episode. It's I, incredible. I've it, weeped at that show. Yeah, I we were just talking about it. Jack's so only seen a couple episodes. I'm like, you got to get to The Cop in Atlanta. The Cop in Atlanta is the best one. It's, I mean, that's my favorite one. It was so unexpected. And so, I mean, in, hmm. in kind of like other ends of the spectrum, I watch The Bachelor and think a lot of the moments are very heavily produced uh -huh. and, um, oh, you know, sure. encouraged in some way. And time specifically. Oh, you yeah. brought that person in at that yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Um, um, but I find queer eye to be very raw in a yes. in a contained way, in like a polished way. Weirdly, yeah, yeah. The last one, I the the last one, the fire thing felt like a slight 
promotional content for some reason. Yeah. But um, the those farm were, and bless them hashtag heroes. Yeah. I mean, they were all so good that it felt they weird to criticize. They were such good sports. It was, I know. But it also felt weird. All the episodes were so good that it felt weird to criticize the ones that weren't as like 2,000% yeah. impactful to yeah. me unexpectedly. That it all of a sudden strange. this one that is perfect, I was like, hmm. They didn't really change. <laughs> I, <was laughs> I got like, a gift. They were good from the start. So yeah. like, I want to watch the journey. I know. You do want to watch the journey. But it is it is one of those shows, you know, here I was earlier at the episode shitting on earnestness. But like, it is an earnest yeah. sort of like do good show. There's a, I was on, you know, every time I was on YouTube, I kept getting recommended this video uh-huh. of, a, uh, of, uh, of a little boy going camping. And I was like, why is this always on? And I clicked on it. And it is, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of this little, like, heavy set. 10 year old I can never tell what age a child is is there 2 or 25 yeah, exactly. <laughs> somewhere in between that preteen okay a preteen which is weird for an adult to say <laughs> uh, anyway this this um sweet preteen in his tent uh-huh. and he's like hey guys um uh I'm just trying to get uh 70 you know break past 70 subscribers and uh anyway here's my setup I'm camping so my first time camping outside and it's night and there's going to be a blizzard tonight. It's going to be super cold. And then he has this time lapse and he checks in. He goes over his equipment and oh. all this kind of stuff. And then he like wakes up in the morning. He's like, it was so cold. I almost froze to death. And he's like scraping the tent. Look at all this ice. I had to go in the, in the house. He's by his house. <laughs> I had to go in the house to get a warm shower just to warm up. And he's just earnest talking about his thing. And it has over like a million and a half views. What? He has over like 86,000 subscribers. Oh. And the internet just randomly got together and was nice to this kid. All the comments, all of them, none of them are like, you're fat, fuck you. None yeah. of them is that shit. It's like, way to go, dude. I love your content. <laughs> Keep it up. Wow. And he has these like, he's like, I can't believe I got 70,000 subscriber videos where he's like, I bought a bunch of fireworks. So I'm going to set them off for you guys. I can't tell you how much this means to me. He's so <laughs> earnest. He's like, I wow. love this. This is like the greatest. And he just sets off fireworks. It's Amazing. <laughs> Finally, the internet did something good. It's so good. Oh, I have to I want to go see this now. Yeah, yeah, so, check it out. It's not I mean it's not exciting, but it's like yeah. it's it's just like There's a glimpse a into being kind of a kind of a loner boy. Yeah. He, like he's not there with a friend. He's by himself camping for the first time and out there in the tent. He's kind of scared. Wow. He's scared. <laughs> <laughs> he's I only got 3 out like 3 hours of sleep cuz I couldn't sleep cuz the blizzard. I mean, it's so I mean it's like oh, it's precious. Oh, precious. So maybe you like earnestly more than you think. I do like a bit of sweetness. <laughs> is there a <laughs> But member? being jaded it helps me survive in this world. Yeah, yeah you got a healthy true. balance. Yeah. Um is there a queer eye cast member that you love the most? I thought Long hair fabulous was going to Jonathan. kill me every single step of the way. <laughs> every yeah. single now time. Now I'm like, you go, girl. Like, yeah. I kind of like him. But every single time he speaks, I laugh hysterically. Yes, He's, I forget just, the name. He just supports everything. I'd be like, yes, watch. Yes, yeah. jeans. Yeah. Yes, shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, <he's> so <laughs> stoked. He loves I mean, it. That's the thing about that show, because I've only seen like two episodes, but watching it, I'm just like, this is like a cartoon. Yeah. Like they these are. guys are so over the top. And then there's like these like interstitial transitional things where, where it's they just, just like dance. dancing. They just Dance. I think about every time I see that I, I think about is... the hour that yes. they spent shooting same, that same, same. they're like okay guys we're in the studio right they're on right. They're on stage they're yeah. like they put stage. on the music <laughs> and like, like what was their direction like okay just like have fun be loose right down the barrel got yeah. all, all eye contact right. with the yeah. lens yeah, yeah, yeah. flirt with us flirt with us yes yes and yeah. they're all like I mean, <laughs> I honestly, and then it's like, okay, we're doing it in pairs. Grab Bobby's tie, pull him off. Okay, good, good. Honestly, I think there was hardly any direction. Uh, they seem like the kind of people that are just like, the music goes All on. All you need is music. They're like, ah! <laughs> the, I tell you who I find is one of the most sexy men and the most guys who like I would go on a date with uh-huh. just to f- sort of figure out where I'm at on the sexual spectrum <laughs> is the Scottish... Scottish slash Indian man. Oh, Tam. Yeah. yeah. yeah Tam. He's just a a crazy, awesome accent. He's just so... Oh, God. He's... he's Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Call my ass. Uh, yeah, his uh, his accent, I was so... The whole like first like two episodes, I just couldn't like pinpoint. He like, sounds like Alan Cumming. 
He's just, yeah. it's so, and he's, he's so confident. He's in confident a, and he's yeah. calm and he knows all about being a gentleman. He really does. And he doesn't give the men that they're making over it an opportunity to say no. He like plows right yeah. through any insecurity they have by being like, you don't want that shirt? We'll put this shirt on you then. Look, now it's different. And then you roll this up and then you do this. And he doesn't <laughs> give them a chance to think about what he's doing to yeah. them. Yeah. And he, he spots it pretty good. Like he doesn't suddenly put, you know, uh, you know, Ronnie McGillicuddy and like, I don't know, hipster rag and bone or right, something. Like right. He brings him to like, you know. <laughs> oh man, that all the first episode of the old man in Atlanta that was trying to get his ex-wife back and he oh. and he loved them so much. He's like, I made friends with them. Uh, and yeah. he's like, <laughs> he is, I he missed is, them when they left. He is, like a, he is a Josh Rubin character. Like, I can't believe it. I never knew that. I was so pretty. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's incredible. Ah, oh, bless him. He's like, he's like your uncle that you, you like, you kind of wish you had because he's so sweet. And you're uh, like, uncle, come over. Come to LA. Yeah, he's just sugar to the core. He's, <laughs> it's true. So, he's a sweetie. Uh, I want Karamo to just follow me around and just tell me like, I'm, I'm, everything's okay all the time. And just, <laughs> like everything's gonna be okay yeah. and all you need to do is this rope course and you're gonna get through yeah. it <laughs> yeah. um okay someone wants to know what was his aol screen name i didn't have aol aol really? is it, it's a you very Canadian american online? thing yeah i i we didn't have it. i remember i wanted it i got like in my pc mag stuff i got like you had a pc discs. magazine yeah yeah their pc gamer magazine or or like PC World and all oh, that Oh, yeah, kind of I've stuff. seen PC World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there would be these discs in various... With like free minutes of that. Yeah, like you can install because it would be a program you install. And uh, yeah. I would always be like, Mom, Dad, can we? And they're like, no, what is it? <laughs> they're British. <laughs> Get it out of here. Canadians no, sound weird. We had a local dial-up and so it was just like, we just had dial-up and, you know, whatever, Netscape, what web crawler, your... Alta Vista. Yeah. What... I had ICQ though in terms of messaging. What's ICQ? I don't even know what that is. Motherfucker, what? <laughs> Sorry. Do you know? Sorry. Yeah. You know? You what know? it okay. What is it? It's like AOL Messenger or okay. it, or Microsoft Messenger or whatever. It's just a it's like a yeah. Just a messaging system. It's a messaging thing. Uh, but I like had my first girlfriend through ICQ. Really? So, oh yeah, yeah. H my from, yeah, ASL. <laughs> I remember going to chat rooms and oh, <laughs> yeah. a little perverted fourteen year old boy trying to cyber ASL? probably forty year old guys. ASL, like, I'm twenty eight. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, what's the perfect age to get it? Uh eighteen? <laughs> <laughs> well, How could you be that old? You're probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> My friend's brother met his his now ex wife on Napster. Nice. They met through. What? They were downloading the same stuff on I Napster. Know you you could, great taste I didn't in music. know you could connect. You? Oh, they, I've done that. I remember Napster. Napster. I didn't know that you could either. Till I heard the story. Oh. Yeah, that he in like saw 2000, that. Two thousand, I think there she was, was like downloading from like yeah. him a bunch, and he was like, "Who is this person that's downloading like, you like all?" My, yeah. So you like my shit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go in that one folder. It's uh, it's adult porn. <laughs> yeah, that was always. I used to run around uh, IRC and like go into people's like f serves and and wow. there was always landmine folders that you're like, I'm not gonna go in that one. Yeah, again. that's a red flag. Do from doing Silicon Valley, have you learned more about like coding and that sort of thing at all? I mean, n n no. no. I mean, <laughs> if anything, I've learned more about like the business of the investing startup. in startups and Series A and Series B and seed money and all that kind of stuff. Does it make you want to invest in startups? I have. You have? Yeah. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, a few things. So you're an angel investor? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess in some companies, uh, sure. But uh, I've done in various different stages. Uh, it's pretty sweet. to. It's a nice deal to be on this specific show because there's yeah. ways in that uh, maybe other people wouldn't have that opportunity that makes sense but uh yeah a couple of promising ones beyond meat which you may have even yeah ate. those burgers are great they're fantastic we gotta you know have less cows because it turns out they fart global warming yeah and uh, <laughs> they fart global warming they do <laughs> and uh and uh well this not this very this we'll see if they can do it the water effects the solar desalination company which could like help us have water from groundwater and oh, that's amazing that sounds really cool water the whole california basin there that's great very cool we'll see i don't know there's a few others there's a few others there's a few others well i have a question about that actually sure um when you go to actual silicon valley yes do you find that people like the show feel weird about the cuz i mean it's like i really like the show but I, one of the reasons i like it is it it's sort of like a love letter to Silicon Valley as well as like a searing satire of Silicon Valley yeah. at the exact same time. Yeah, yeah. That's the credit to the writers. Uh, 
I get typically when I get when I go to the valley, especially I get two responses. One is, oh my God, I love the show. We have a Guilfoyle. It's so good. It's right. like you had a camera there in the room when that happened right. to me. Right. It's a documentary of my life. I love it. And then the other response is, I can't watch your show. It's a documentary of my life. <laughs> and you make me relive all the trauma that I experienced as a CEO. Right. <laughs> and I like every decision that Richard makes, I want to throw some uh, my remote through my TV and stuff. So um, it's a, uh, Either way, I'll take it because that's. I couldn't imagine being a CEO and watching that show because every decision where you're like, oh, it's not about how good your company is. It's a matter of like resource allocation. And yes. Are you growing fast enough? And, and where's your like, morality lie in all that? Oh, it's Ugh. so nerve wracking. Well, you can, we can clearly see that when there's enough money flowing around, morality and the so called good companies um, throw all that morality to the goddamn wind. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I'd, I'd say, I mean, not to sound like cynic, but I mean, just well, look at what's happening. Yeah, it's all no, about it's, it's all about who's paying the more billions. Cash. We'll put in a cash lot of money. cash sound effects right now, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they understand Ka-ching. what we're for. They, thank you, yeah. thank you for doing that. Sound effect number three. Should we get one clean? Ka-ching. Perfect. Really good. Okay, just really to, for good the board, for the board. Um, well, on that slightly morbid note, we reached the end of the podcast. <laughs> I thought we weren't supposed to go too deep. <laughs> no, I mean we talked about um, fem- uh, feminism a lot on the last podcast oh, this yeah. morning. So Me too. yeah. When are you not? When, when, are I, not? when are we not in this town? Uh, but we got you a personalized fortune cookie for being a guest on our podcast. We Aww. didn't do anything weird to it other than give you a fortune. Do people want to ASMR this <laughs> shit and hear it? Crunch? Are you an ASMR person? Uh, not the talking, not that because I the like I hear tapping? this this the spit and the mouth, and yeah. usually it's like a sexy girl, and it's like okay, this is like porn light. Like yeah. if I want to see porn, I'm gonna <laughs> see it. <laughs> like, this is too intro. Yeah. I'm so many levels. I don't want to use this. my imagination. <laughs> like I'm watching stuff that I have to reconcile with my brain. So that's cute that you're into that. No, I like the ASM. I was, I literally just weird that we're, t- well, like it's the probably soap on the carving brain. stuff. I like the chiropractic stuff. Like the oh, cracking what? knuckles cracking and stuff? Cracking adjustments. Oh, wow. Cause oh, I love, I love, uh, you know, I've had a couple of kind of back changing adjustments. So I, I know the satisfaction and I like watching the videos of these, you know, these poor people who can't walk or they're bent, they're hunched over and they oh, go I've to these those, really yeah. good chiropractors and it's like pop, pop. And then they're, and they're like, fine. in seven days, they're like, oh my God, I can stand up right. Wow. Yeah. And the cracks that they make. <laughs> oh, the dingers and the dongers. Well, you're welcome to ASMR that. All right. Here I am. I'm just <laughs> going to eat this fortune cookie. First, I want to crack it open so I can get the fortune. <laughs> I'm just opening it up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I'm glad you did no, it in ASMR. Not, it's hilarious. I'm, I'm really, really glad you did it. It's ASMR. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Hey, we like the internet, right? Yeah. Um, where can people find tickets to your touring show? You're welcome to eat it too. It's soft. <laughs> we had to open it. Yeah, we, we steam. We steam them to open them so we can put the fortunes in. There. Yeah. We uh, the extra mile. You want to? Do you want to hear this cry? <laughs> <laughs> the most you know, unsatisfying crime. I always order my fortune cookies soft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take one yeah. soft, please. <laughs> I'll take a soft boiled fortune cookie. Uh, where can people get tickets to see you um, touring and doing improv and all that fun stuff? Uh, sadly, uh, Ben and I announced all this stuff without like a website and stuff. You can go onto my Instagram at Tom Beanie, and mm-hmm. I've got like one of those Instagram stories that's like pinned. Yeah, you'll get some information there. Cool. And then um, we're gonna get like a website any day now, and you can always just go to Middle Edition Schwartz.com. Sweet. Go check it out if you guys um, want to go see funny stuff IRL. Why yeah. not? Hey, internet. Yeah, internet. Get to four. Uh, thanks again for being here and making time. And um, we'll fine. see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. It was Grace Helbig. One more time, support for today's shows comes from The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest, a must-read epic fantasy set in a rich and immersive magical world that will suck you in completely. With a diverse cast of awesome, complex characters, this book is perfect for fans of Harry Potter and Tamara Pierce. Powerful magic, a deadly legacy, 
and a world at the edge of war. Ooh, sounds juicy. The Black Witch by Laurie Forrest, available now wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Produced and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer Melissa D. Mons. With writing by Diane Kang. Audio support by Chris Henry. Editing by Melissa D. Mons. And an extra special thank you to Flula for the theme music. (laughs) 